Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series where we look at some of the most popular players and I try to help to guide you to see which ones are worth getting. And if you just choose your players from this small selection, you've got a reasonably good chance of finishing the top 5% globally, which means you should do all right in your mini leagues. You won't win the whole thing, but you should do all right. We start by quickly looking at the score for the various players for game week one. So the goalkeepers, 8, 7, 5, 4 and 1, 1. So the two expensive ones, Rare Becker, they did all right. So something I have been saying is I'm expecting defenders to do better this year than last year. And there's a good reason for that. And that turned out to be true for game week one, certainly. So for the expensive defenders, Trent 8, White 6, Saliba 6, Gvardiol 6, Virgil van Dijk 6, Gabriel 6, Trippier didn't play. For the cheaper defenders, Pedro Porro got nine. He's flagged now as maybe injured. Hopefully he's not. Burn five, Konza, Howard, Bellas. The rest didn't really do anything. Look, For the more expensive midfielders, Salah 14, Saka 12. So well done if you had either of those. The rest didn't do anything. But Fernandez was very good. So I think he is going to probably be right this season. For the cheaper midfielders, they didn't do anything at all. Garnacho 4. Eze was very good. Uh, had a perfectly good goal, not allowed. I think Eze is going to be good this season. For the expensive strikers, Havertz 12, Haaland 7, Isaac 5. The cheaper forward, Wood got 9. Well done if you managed to choose him. The rest didn't do anything. So the goalkeepers. Ray is an OK player. He's actually a very good player. But the fixtures for the next four game weeks aren't great. He's only got one home fixture. That's next game week at home to Brighton. But Brighton are very attacking. He may get three clean sheets the next four game weeks. He could end up getting none. Becker, his fixtures, Liverpool's fixtures are better than Arsenal's. The only real downside of having Becker is it means you can only have two outfield Liverpool players because you can only have three in total. But Becker's a perfectly good goalkeeper. Apart from that, Pickford, Everton had a player sent off. They let in quite a few goals. And Everton defensively had a slow start last season. If you've got Pickford, I'd say don't panic about it. They're away to Spurs, reasonably good chance of letting in goals then. But the week after that, home to Bournemouth, they may be all right. Martinez, good keeper. They're playing Arsenal this week, Aston Villa, so probably no clean sheet there. And then Flecken's cheap, Ariola's cheap. And then we have Ward, purely as bench fodder, he's not going to play. Regarding the defenders, the expensive defenders, Trent, very good, nice run of fixtures. White is very good. Saliba is very good. Their immediate fixture run is not great though. So I wouldn't bother bringing them in. But if you've got them, you certainly don't need to sell them. Gvardiol, so Man City have got some nice fixtures coming up. At home to Ipswich, it looks like he's not playing as an attacking role as he did at the end of last season. But he's all right. If you've got him, he's perfectly fine to keep hold of. I wouldn't sell a good player like Saliba or White to bring him in. But he's all right. He's fine to keep. Trippier, he might even be moving on out of the Premier League. We don't know what his minutes are. He's risky to have. If you've got him, it's worth selling him. If you want to sell Trippier for one of the other ones on the screen, that would be a good move. Virgil van Dijk, he's got a nice run of fixtures. Gabriel, very good player, very popular. Only one decent fixture the next four weeks, though. For the cheaper defenders, Pedro Porro. So he's flagged as potentially being injured. 75% chance of playing the site saying... Home to Everton's very nice, could get an attacking return if he plays. But then he's away to Newcastle and then at home to Arsenal, so they're not great fixtures. So I'd say don't buy Porro. But if you've got him and you've got cover of another couple of defenders on your bench, or even just one that can come in, then I think I'd advise keeping him. If you want to move him on, that's fine. But keeping him should be fine as well. But there's a slight risk. If you've not got him, I'd advise not bringing him in though. Anderson's all right, maybe off the Fulham, currently at Crystal Palace. Burn, Newcastle's fixtures aren't great. We don't know what the preferred Newcastle defence is at the moment, but he's only four and a half, nice and cheap. Konza, you wouldn't buy him this week because he's playing Arsenal, might be all right. Mikalenko's away to Spurs, you wouldn't really want him this week. If you've got him, he's fine to have, but you wouldn't be buying him. So Barco's leaving the Premier League, he's going out on loan somewhere in Europe. I think it's the case with people selling him his price won't go down because he's out of the league now, but I don't know for sure. So um, 
to obviously don't buy Barco and he's fine to sell. And then we've got Howard Bellis, purely as bench fodder. But there's no point selling Barco if you have no spare money because all you could do is buy another £4 million defender. So you might as well wait till you've got something else you need to do. Regarding the midfielders, the expensive midfielders, Salah is very good. He's got a nice run of fixtures. Palmer, we don't know for sure yet the exact role he's going to be playing in Chelsea, but Chelsea do have some nice fixtures. So if you've got him, great. If you want to bring him in, there's a slight risk in that we don't know exactly what he's going to be doing, but he should be a solid player. But I've only got him down as an OK player at the moment because there's a little bit of unknown, but they do have some nice fixtures. Saka is good. OK, he's away to Villa this week, but Arsenal, I think, are more likely to score than not. And he's a very good choice. So if you haven't got Saka or Palmer and you can choose one, Saka's probably the better choice at the moment. Son. So now that they've got Solanke, he's likely to be playing a bit further back. On the left wing, may get more assists and fewer goals. Didn't get anything at Leicester. Um, you don't need to panic selling him, but I wouldn't advise buying him if you don't have him. Foden's hopefully going to get more minutes now. If we knew he was playing 90 minutes, he'd be green. But we don't know what his minutes are going to be. But he is against Ipswich. He's probably going to be all right. Odegaard's a solid pick. Fernandez. If I could have Fernandez or Odegaard the same price, I would choose Fernandez. That's not to say he's a better player, but I think he probably is. But compared to the rest of the team, Fernandez is head and shoulders above the rest of the team. So he's got more chance, I think, of getting a return, more chance of getting bonus points. Whereas Odegaard's surrounded by some very good players. For the cheaper midfielders, Gordon's a good player, but three of the next four game weeks are away from home and he's very good at home and less good away from home. It's not worth selling him. If you want to change things up in your squad, you can, but don't panic sell him. But I absolutely wouldn't be buying him at the moment. Bowen did nothing last game week and even got subbed off around the 60-something mark, I think. But hopefully he's going to be all right. No need to panic sell him, but I wouldn't be buying him. As a, it's now looking more likely he will stay at Palace. Last week for Game Week 1 video, it was looking like he might be going to Man City. That's now less likely. So if he stays at Palace, he's probably going to be a very good player to have. And Kunku for 6.5. Chelsea have so many players, we don't yet know what their best 11 is going to be. But if he gets lots of time and lots of games, then he's a good player. Garnacho, I believe he came on, but he got an assist. He's a very good player. Hopefully his minutes will increase and he's worth having, I'd say. Rogers, very good, but home to Arsenal this game week. Winks, he plays, but he's bench fodder. So you, if you've got him, it's just to free up money to have elsewhere. For the strikers, Haaland, very good. If you've got him, well done. If you want to triple captain him this week, that's reasonable. But you absolutely don't have to. You could wait till a double game week later in the season and hope there's a good double game week. But it's not unreasonable to triple captain him if you want to. Watkins, not a great fixture this week, but after this game week, the fixtures are quite nice. Isaac, good player, got nothing last game week, but he is no doubt a good striker. Havertz is very good. Solanke's hopefully going to be good once he settles into the team a little bit. Home to Everton this week, then he's got a couple of hard fixtures, then the fixtures are a bit better again. He's absolutely fine to have. For the cheaper forwards, Tony didn't play last game week. Brentford aren't wanting to play him until they know what's happening with him. And they've got 10 days or fewer until the uh, transfer window closes. And then we know what's happening. If he stays at Brentford, he's a good buy. If he goes to another team in the Premier League, he may be a good buy. If he goes abroad, obviously we don't want him. So at the moment, time recording, he's very risky. If you've got him, I'd say he's fine to sell. Or you could hold on to him. But 7.5 million, I think he'd get somebody better in the short term. Like Munez, for example. 6 million, Fulham have some very nice fixtures. Fulham were good at United last week. They didn't get any goals, but they were good. So I think Munez is worth having. So would so with Forest, they've just bought another striker. Or oh, looks like they're getting another striker. I think they've got one. So his minutes as striker may reduce over the next two or three weeks. I wouldn't be buying him. If you've got him, he's okay to have. Chao Pedro's okay to have, but Brighton have lots of attacking players. They've got Man United, then they're away to Arsenal. So I'd say 
Man United might not be bad, away to Arsenal is bad, but then Ipswich and Nottingham Forest, they're both good. So he is nice and cheap though, five and a half million. If you've got him, I'd say don't sell him. If you haven't got him, you'd only buy him if you wanted a cheap forward. This is my suggested benching order for the goalkeepers. You've got two of them. The first one you see that I show you is the one that goes on your bench. So Ward, bench fodder, he's on your bench. I don't think Flecken's got much chance of getting clean sheet. He's on your bench. Then it'd be Pickford, then Ariola, then Martinez, even though he's at home, but he's at home to Arsenal. I think Arsenal have got more chance of a clean sheet. That's why I've got Raya above Martinez. And then finally Becker. I think Becker's got the best chance to get a clean sheet this week. I'm now going to run through all the players and give you my suggested bench order. I've taken six out and they're the potential captaincy choices. The first player you see that I show you, I suggest goes position three on your bench, next one position two, and the final one position one that you have. So if you've got Barco, he's on your bench. And then it would be Cannon, who I forgot to show you because I skipped past him, but he's a very cheap forward who's not going to play. Then it's Tony, Winks, Trippier, Mikolenko, Concert, Byrne, Howard Bellis, Anderson, Rogers, Nkunku, Jao Pedro, Wood, Bowen, Gordon, Odegaard, Saliba, Gabriel, White. If you've got more than one Arsenal defender, you want to push one of them down a few places, that's fine. But if you want to keep them all there, that's fine as well. Watkins, Garnacho, Virgil van Dijk. Pedro Porro, now hopefully with his injury, he'll either get no minutes or 90 minutes. So I think he's worth playing. Then Gvardiol, Munez, Palmer, Fernandez, Trent, Havertz, Solanke and Foden. Regarding captaincy, Haaland, I'd say is an excellent choice for your captain. If you want to triple captain him, that's fine. If you want to wait till later in the season, that's fine as well. This is arguably... The best captain choice for any of the single game weeks, though. Salah is also a very good captain choice this week. After that, Saka is okay. Eze, Sun, and Isaac. So if you want to make one of these your captain, one your vice captain, that's sensible. However, if you want to choose somebody else, then any of the green players we showed you, they'd be all right as well. As for the background picture, well, the Premier League, the fancy Premier League, it's a marathon not a sprint so this is the tortoise and the hare currently the hare's got the football if you had a bad start don't worry about it if we just keep picking the popular players consider which ones are worth having you should finish up all right so there we have it that's my suggestions for game week two in the five percent series hopefully that made enough sense uh any questions just leave it in the comments i normally get around to answering them i think all right thank you very much for watching bye